Hi, my name is Amy Hara, and I'm an associate professor of radiology at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And what I want to talk to you today is about radiation dose with CT scans. Now, a CT scan is a common procedure that we do every day. Um, there's about 65 million of these examinations performed every year in the United States. So this is a test where you lay on your back on a table, usually have an IV inserted into your arm that gives you contrast during the procedure, and you hold your breath while the table is slid through a donut sized hole opening, and pictures are taken anywhere from head to toe. So we do this examination to look for a lot of different tests like stroke, uh, diverticulitis, appendicitis, renal stones, bowel obstruction, cancer, and to look if cancer is spread. So it's a lot of different uses. Um, recently in the publicity and the uh, media, there's been a lot of attention concerning radiation dose with CT. So there have been headlines such as CT scans can cause cancer that I believe has caused a lot of widespread fear in the public and it's important to separate fact from friction when we talk about this argument. So a lot of the media publicity came after an article that was published in a prestigious medical journal that said that was a theoretical increased risk of cancer from CT scans. And it's important to know that uh, this article was based on a theoretical risk. So there's actually never been a patient who's had a CT scan that then got cancer because of that CT scan, or any studies that have really shown that CT scans cause cancer. But that this article was based on risks associated with radiation exposure that was based on atomic bomb survivor data. So a lot of people in the medical community really believe that the fundamental basis of this article was flawed. Uh, because the radiation exposure blast that you get from an atomic bomb is obviously very different from small radiation exposures that you get from imaging over several years. So a colleague was uh, talking about this with another patient the other day and said it's similar to if you are walking across the carpet and you get those little electric shocks versus sticking your finger in an electric socket. You know, those are two very different things. And that's similar to the analogy that they're kind of making in this paper, that one is similar to the other. But in any event, I think that the paper raised important issues, that one, CT scans are being done more and more commonly today, and there is a small but real risk of the radiation exposure with CT scans. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the numbers, um, because I think it helps to put in perspective uh, exposure from CT scans versus other types of exposure that we see every day. So just from walking around in the environment uh, every day, uh, we are all exposed to background levels of normal radiation. And that number in a year is usually about 3.5 millisieverts. So in comparison, a head CT is about 1.8 millisieverts. So it's less than what you get from a year of walking around just in your backyard. On the other hand, a CT scan of your abdomen is higher. It can be 8 to 10 millisieverts, uh, which is higher than what you normally get from walking around, but is actually the same background level of radiation that somebody living in Denver gets on a yearly basis. So the higher the altitude, the higher levels of normal background radiation that we all have. There are other uh, types of radiation exposure that people get every year um, that are similar. So uh, airline pilots, also people at high altitudes, frequent flyers, are exposed to more background radiation as well, and that can be five millisieverts per year. Um, people that work in uh, nuclear plants as well are exposed to exposure similar to an abdomen CT. There have been a lot of studies that have looked actually at airline pilots, people that worked in uh, nuclear plants, and have shown that those folks don't have any higher risk of cancer than anybody else in the general population. So I think we have real data to show that small levels of radiation from one or two CT scans over your lifetime doesn't have any increased risk of cancer. So when should you be concerned? Well, there's two groups of patients that we're really concerned with for radiation exposure, and one is children. Uh, we know that radiation uh, exposure and what happens with the radiation occurs on a cellular level. And so if you get an imaging test, you're not going to see the effects of radiation today or tomorrow. It's something, if it manifests itself, won't happen for 10 or 20 years down the road. So that's why we're really concerned about children, because they have a whole lifetime ahead of them, and we don't want any of those uh, radiation uh, risks or changes to happen over their lifetime. Now, on the other hand, if you have a 70-year-old patient that's getting a CT scan, uh, you're very unlikely to see any effect of that radiation exposure during that patient's lifetime. So those are two very different groups of people that you need to be concerned about. So we're always concerned with children, and we're also concerned with younger people that get tests um, early in their lifetime if they have a chronic disease, and then get a lot of scans um, over their lifetime as well. So what can you do to reduce and minimize your dose? Um, if you have a child, you always want to ask your physician, unless you're in an emergent situation, can that uh, clinical question be answered with a test that doesn't require radiation, like MRIs or ultrasounds? Um, sometimes you still need to do a CT scan. 
And in those um, instances, you want to be able to go to a facility that has a newer type of CT scanner that allows you to do lower radiation uh, dose examinations. So we have one of those newer scanners at Mayo Clinic Arizona that allows us to scan patients at 50% lower dose than some of the older scanners. And actually, as time goes on, I think all the CT scanners will convert to a lower dose type of technique, but only certain facilities have those scanners currently. Now, if you're a younger patient, for example, someone with Crohn's disease, they're often diagnosed at a young age and then get a lot of imaging over their lifetime. And in those patients, we now recommend they switch over and get their questions answered with MR rather than CT to save some of that exposure to radiation. So to try to put this all into summary again, the CT scans can be a life-saving procedure. And really, should, you should not refuse a CT scan because of a fear of radiation exposure if you're in one of those emergent situations, such as you need to rule out a stroke or bleeding on the inside of your body or after a car accident. You really need to get that CT scan. If you have a child or a younger patient that gets a lot of scans over their lifetime, you want to ask your physician about changing to MRs or ultrasounds or low-dose CT scans. So thank you very much.